Did you know that Australia as a landmass is only about 3% populated? It's kind of hard to fathom given how much we hear about this country on a global scale. But Australia's population density is actually among the lowest in the world. With a land area of nearly 7.7 .7 million square kilometers, Australia is the world's sixth largest country, yet has a population of just over 26 million people. That means that there are vast stretches of uninhabited land where you can drive for hours without encountering another person or even a town. But what are the actual reasons behind this low population density and what are the implications for Australia's future? Today we're looking deep into the country slash continent of Australia, as we tend to explain this sparsely populated land and everything about it. The land down under, New Holland, Britain's reformed ex-con cousin and the last populated frontier of the world. Australia is mostly a void expanse, but one filled with extraordinary, bizarre and unique sights. With remarkable animals, customs, statistics and people. Australia is of course surrounded by water, as the island it is, with the Southern Ocean to the south, the Indian Ocean to the west and the Pacific Ocean to the east. Ranking in below Brazil and above India in terms of landmass, where the land stretches nearly 4000 kilometers between its west and east points, and 3860 kilometers between the north and south. Trying to put this size in perspective, here's a map of Europe, and if we remove the transcontinental parts of Russia and then place Australia on top, we end up with a country that's nearly 24% larger than Europe. Now, the really interesting part is the population of this country. With all this size, you imagine Australia having a large number of inhabitants, and probably even be somewhere at the top of the list in that regard. Well, the fact is that this is home to about 26 million people, which is actually less than many countries located here, such as Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Ukraine and Poland. And when comparing it to the UK, the Brits have actually more than doubled the population. But it gets even wilder. You see, there are even states in the US with a higher population, as both California and Texas has them beaten. And since Australia is in fact an island, it's interesting to see that there are seven islands that are smaller but still has a higher population. In an earlier video, we talked about the major population of Indonesia, and two of the islands that beat Australia is located here, Sumatra and Java, with the latter one being about 60 times smaller, yet have almost six times the population. So I think you're starting to understand that Australia has a very low population density, and when looking at countries of the world, older Mongolia has a lower one, with three mates per square kilometers. But even though Australia has a low population density as a whole, that's not the case for its cities as the country is among the most heavily urbanized nations in the world, with 90% of the population concentrated in relatively small urban areas. In fact, nearly two out of every three Australian live in one of the five major cities, being Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth and Adelaide. So what happened? Why does the country look like this? Well, there are both geographical and historical reasons why Australia is barely and also disproportionately populated. If you were to ask an actual Aussie, they might say something like, you cannot live in land because the heat is unbearable. And to be frank, they're not wrong, as the majority of Australia is a barren, hot, inhospitable desert where everything is trying to kill you. Well, maybe not the quokkas, they seem nice. But on a more serious reason as to why this is, the continent is one of the driest after Antarctica, and it's actually due to it being so close to the cold Arctic region, as this makes it hard for the water to warm up, evaporate and turn into rain clouds. And without rain, the soil in Australia just doesn't get the water it needs to grow plants and support life. Additionally, Australia's mountain chain, known as the Great Dividing Range, blocks the inland from the showers coming from the Pacific in the east. And these are the main reasons why 85% of Aussies live in a strip of land just 50 kilometers from the coastline. But this unique population distribution also creates some bizarre situations across the continent. For example, the Shire of East Pilbara in Western Australia is roughly the size of Japan, but has only around 10,000 people. That's like having the whole city, the size of Tokyo, with only a few people living in it. There's also this place in South Australia, which is a territory roughly the size of France, but is only home to a few thousand people. And maybe you heard of Anna Creek, the world's largest cattle ranch, which is roughly the size of Israel and is home to about 8 people and 10,000 cows. However, despite its small population, Australia has a large amount of arable land and resources compared to other countries in Southeast Asia. In fact, Australia has more arable land than Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, the Philippines, Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos combined, despite having a much smaller population. And with that, Australia has by far the highest ratio in the world of arable land to population, at around 1.9 arable hectares of land for every one citizen of the country. That means that Australia has a lot of potential for a bigger population as well as growing crops and raising animals like cows, sheep and chickens. 
Now, this island slash continent nation doesn't have a single land neighbor, but shares the waves through maritime borders with Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, East Timor, the French territory of New Caledonia, Solomon Islands and New Zealand. So geographical features like being an island with no land borders and having very little rain in the majority of the country surely has its part in the country being so densely populated. But we also mention a historical reason. So let's jump back in time and find what's most likely has helped, or not helped, to Australia being so big with so little people. The first human settlers on the Australian continent are the aboriginals, that back in the day when the sea levels were much lower could walk down the broader landmass in Southeast Asia known as Sunderland and then by a short sea crossing arrived to either present-day Australia or New Guinea, which was attached to Australia by land some 65 to 50,000 years ago. These native people of Australia created special ways of life, language and society through many centuries of living in different parts of the land. And as the hunter-gatherers they were, they hunted some animals so well that those animals disappeared from Australia. Now, these animals were special and interesting, even more so than kangaroos and koalas. For example, there was a giant wombat that weighed about 2 tons, and then the meat-eating marsupial lion that had a pooch for its babies, and the giant kangaroos that weighed over 200 kilos. Then, as in pretty much all history, there's the part about when the Europeans came. There are two ideas about who came here first. One is the official idea that says a Dutch captain named Wilhelm Jansson, after starting his journey in Indonesia, arrived in the western coast of Cape York Peninsula in Queensland, in a ship called Dijfuken in 1606. The other idea is less known and suggests that the Portuguese might have discovered Australia nearly 100 years before. It is surprising though that neither of these theories mention the English, even though they use English language and the flag in Australia today. The main clues to the mystery, however, are some 16th century French maps called Dieppe maps that shows a big landmass between Indonesia and Antarctica called Java La Grande, and also the fact that the Portuguese settled in East Timor about 10 years before the Dutch arrived in Australia and East Timor is about 650 kilometers away from Australia. What do you think about this mystery? Let us know in the comments. It took more than 100 years for the English to map the eastern side of Australia. In 1770, James Cook, an Englishman, finally mapped it out and called it New South Wales, a name which one of the states in Australia still carries. While Queensland and Victoria were named after Queen Victoria, who ruled Britain at the time. Now, compared to the colonization of the Americas, Australia was colonized much later, as the United States started their Revolutionary War just five years after the mapping by James Cook. And thanks to this war, the British lost a major territory in the Americas and had to look for another place to send their convicts. And what better place than Australia? So what's the one important historical reason to the population growth I was talking about? Well, the White Australia Policy. In 1901, the separate colonies in Australia joined together to form a country, although still under British control. They made this rule called the White Australia Policy, that aimed to limit people coming to Australia from countries outside of Europe. This basically meant that only people from Britain were allowed to come to Australia, so migration were sort of put on pause. Well, I suppose everybody should have the same rights in this world. What do I think of it? I think it's very good. Then, World War I happened and the Australians were called up by the Crown to help fight. And a little over 400,000 volunteered. Alongside their sidekick to the southeast, they formed the Australian and New Zealand Army Corp, known as the ANZACs, who infamously were part of the unsuccessful Gallipoli campaign landing. The flag utilizes the British Union Yak alongside the Southern Cross constellation and the big Commonwealth Star. And now, after World War II, non-British Europeans slowly was allowed to immigrate to Australia. And by the 70s, the White Australia policy was abolished. And today, the country has a considerable population who have Asian ancestry, being mostly Chinese and Indian. However, if we speak about the people visiting the country as tourists and not living there, they're also on the lower end of the list. Perhaps the country is just too far away for having a lot of tourists. What do you think? But the guests who do visit Australia are usually entertained by the peculiar Australian dollar. It's waterproof, made of plastic and hard to counterfeit. And for those who appreciate other things than funny money, the two major natural landmarks of the desert and the ocean, being the Uluru Sandstone Monolith and the Great Barrier Reef. 
these are some of the things that can't really be described but needs to be seen. And while of the man-made sites, nothing comes even close to the Sydney Opera House, a true symbol of Australia. Sport-wise, Australia's athletes are pretty successful considering the population being fairly small. And the country shines particularly in MMA, now with several UFC champions. But also with its own take on sport, Aussie Rules, which is played on an oval field and mostly resembling rugby. All in all, it's great being Australian, and all they have to endure is everyone else thinking they can do a great Australian accent. And you know, all those killer spiders and snakes, and of course, driving 34 hours straight without seeing a single person. Thanks for watching this video, now take time to visit another place on Earth by clicking on the video on your screen right now.